Lawan, first and foremost, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to my power, Yahweh, and I do so by Hashem Yahweh Shai, which are the true names of the Heavenly Father and of the Son, who the world ignorantly calls Christ, who is a so called black man. Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, broke the thumb to all the Akim out there that's pushing this truth and sincerity. Why Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, broke the thumb to all the elders out there who labor in truth and taught us the truth. Right, and this video is going to be about how our kingdom is going to last forever. Right, because pursuing to the scriptures, after after Esau gets taken down, Jacob is going to come right afterwards and rule. And I was talking to the brother about it. You know, we was talking about how Esau, you know, they think that Jake, you know, our people, we're just going to be at the bottom of the, we're just going to be at the bottom of, society forever as long as the nation of israel liveth esau think that we're just going to be at the bottom which is not true the joke is on them we're not going to be at the bottom forever we're going to be at the top real soon and i said damn that's a video we're going to be at the top real soon and i mentioned daniel 7 on how everybody has a period of time to rule but when you read the whole chapter of Daniel 7, it consists of four beasts, right? You had uh you had the Babylonians. Well, for for really you had the um you had the Assyrians, because the Assyrians are the eagle's wings that got plucked off of the lion, right? But the main ones you had the Babylonians, you had the Median Persians, you had which is the bear. Then you had the Greeks, which is the leopard. Then you had the Romans, right? Then you had that little horn that plucked up three other horns, which that little horn was dealing with America. And then after America, who did you have? Us, the Israelites. And then after the Israelites, who did you have? Nobody else. So we're going to have that uninterrupted rulership forever, right? Forever, man. Even forever and ever, according to Daniel 7. So let me go ahead and read 2nd Ezra's, the 6th chapter, of starting at verse 7. It says, Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? Right, which is dealing with uh, different worlds. Right, not worlds in the orchimony sense, but eon. Which eon means age. Right, verse 8. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau, right, symbolizing Jacob taking down Esau, right? For Esau is the end of the world, which that world is dealing with uh, age, a rulership. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. You see that? So after Esau's world is gone, is done away with or wasted away, Jacob's going to come up in the, in the power. And guess what? It's going to be forever, even forever and ever. So in Daniel 7, this is Daniel 7, verse 18. It says, But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. You see that? So the saints is going to possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And when it says even forever and ever, that literally means what it says. Forever. No, it ain't going to be no antichrist after the thousand year rulership of Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is going to have to fight again. No, it's not going to be none of those things. We're going to be in power forever. Like, like you can't even fathom it. We're going to be in rulership for a very long time. And that's something worth waiting for, man. Man, we're going to have everything. We won't have our hearts, desires. We're going to be ruling once again. You know, the last time we had uh, a peaceful rulership was in the time of King Solomon. And that was only for 40 years, 40 short years. That was probably the shortest reign or the shortest kingdom in history, man. Like, we, we just had a taste, we just had a foreshadow of Yahweh Shai's kingdom. Because, you know, Yahweh Shai 
or King Solomon was Yahweh Shai in the reincarnation. It's the same spirit, but just a different flesh. That was just a prelude. Because it was peace in all his days. We're going to have peace in all in all of our days. But this is verse 19. It says, Then I would know the truth. <clears throat> so I can press the button by accident. Daniel 7 verse 19 says, Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, which is dealing with the Roman, the Romans, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which brass and iron is one is two of the most um, toughest elements, right? Symbolizing how tough, how rigged the Roman Empire was, which devoured, breaking pieces and stamped their residue with his feet, right? The Roman Empire was just tearing through everybody, right? And of the ten horns that were in his head and of the other which came up, before whom three fell, right? Which the other which came up was that little horn. So that little horn dealing with America before whom three fell. Who's the three that fell? Those three that fell are the nations that were in power previously before America, which is dealing with the French, the Spanish, and the British. Even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, and the eyes is dealing with the house and the Senate. So the house and the Senate got to see out of eye, right? And the mouth that speak very great things. You know, all the things that America doesn't speak. You know, America's great, right? With the, we have the best military, terror, we have the best economy, things of that nature. Whose look were, whose look was more stout than his fellows. Now, when it says whose look was more stout than his fellows, uh, stout is going into his pride. America is one of the proudest nations. The proudest nations, Right? Verse 21, it says, I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints. Right, that same horn made war with the saints. So now, breaking down those verses, the same horn is what? Who was the horn that made war with the saints? They're dealing with America. They made war with the saints. Who's the saints? The Israelites. But pursuant to Psalms 148 and verse 14. says he also exalted the horn of his people the praise of all his saints even or indeed of the children of israel a people near unto and praise ye the lord see that's what the saints is dealing with the israelites this is psalms 55 has gathered my saints together unto me those that had made a covenant with me by sacrifice right in that time who made a covenant with the Heavenly Father by sacrifice, the Israelites. You read that in Exodus. Um, forgot which chapter it is. I believe it's the... I believe it was the 22nd chapter, man. So, boom, let me go back. Right? So, Daniel seven twenty one again says, I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Until the ancient of days came, and judgment was given unto the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. See that? And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom after what? The ancient of days gave judgment. Right? Gave judgment. Because it says, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. Right? The Most High. Because the Most High is going to use us for his uh, battle axe and weapons of war. The Most High is going to use us. To pounce on Esau. Matter of fact, you got, got that in, uh, I believe it's Micah. Micah 4 and 13. Yep. Micah 4 and 13. It says, Arise and thrust, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thine horn iron, and I will make thy hooves brass. Damn, so lucky, like man. I don't know why I keep doing that. All right, so, so let me go ahead and read it again. It says, Arise and thrust, O daughter of Zion. The daughter of Zion dealing with uh, Israel. Really dealing with the men of Israel, right? Because our woman, they ain't going to be fighting. It says, For I will make thine horn iron, and I will make thy hooves brass. You see, see that how the Mosai or the Bible, the Bible uses um, uses the strongest elements. 
to um to a to um demonstrate how bad a certain nation was devouring different nations. So this <clears throat> so this is symbolizing how we're just going to be devouring all these different nations. We gonna we gonna be pouncing on them in a, in a, in a in a in a marvelous way, man. Especially because we're going to get those bodies. It says, and thou shalt beat in pieces many people. You see? And thou shalt beat in pieces many people. And I will concentrate their gain unto the Lord. What does that mean? All their wealth is going to be going unto us. And their substance unto the unto the Lord of the whole earth. And all their substance is going to be ours. So, we're going to pounce on them. And then we're going to take their goods. Hey, sounds like hey, sounds like Israel. Sounds like Israel to me. Right, it says. So you, <laughs> you look at it. So it says, "This is NOT." So you can trample many nations to pieces. You will present their stolen riches to the Lord, their wealth to the Lord of all the earth. And what do you think? What do you, where do you think those riches are going to go? To us, man. Is it going to be rewarded to us? This is the book of Ezekiel, and this is and this is the day that I'm looking for, man. How we're about to Zab, I'm of the elect. Ezekiel 25 and 14, it says, And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do an Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord. So you see that the Most High is going to utilize who? My people Israel. So that's what it's talking about in Daniel 7. So back in Daniel 7. Like I said, I'm in Daniel 7 because just to prove how right after um, the rulership of the little horn, who came up into power? Us, starting with our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and just scroll up a little bit. Because look, this Daniel 7 and 11 says, I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. Which the horn is dealing with the little horn. Matter of fact, just a little bit up. Right? Daniel 7 and 8. I considered the horns, and behold, there came among them another little horn. See that? That little horn is dealing with America. Then just skip down. Right? You see the ancient of days that sit, dealing with, dealing with the Most High Yahweh. Right? Then a fiery stream issued and came forth before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him. Right? Salakia, verse 11. I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame, right? And that beast is dealing with dealing with um, dealing with America, man. Right? So you see how he's dealing with the little horn right here? Or this verse is just dealing with America, right? So when you keep going, verse 13, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days. And they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory in the kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away in his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. You see that? In his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So that kingdom is never going to be destroyed. Right? And and what was the reason for our kingdom being destroyed? Why was why was the son of man kingdom destroyed in the first place? Dealing with King Solomon. Right? Why was there a split? Why? How comes every time we got out of captivity, we went right back into captivity? Let's read it. This is Judith, the fifth chapter. Verse 17, it says, And whilst they sinned not before their power, they prospered because the God that hateth iniquity was with them. You see that? So when we were keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, we were we were prospering, man. Okay? Our 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 field was yielding increase, right? We were we were multiplying, the ground wasn't cursed, none of those things, right? But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles. 
very sore and were led captives into a land that was not theirs and the temple of their power was cast to the ground and their cities were taken by the enemy see that so when we went so when we went astray from the law statutes and commandments that's when we would get torn down and guess what in the kingdom of heaven when when we get under the new covenant we're not going to be sinning anymore so that's why our kingdom is going to be a perpetual rulership. Why? Because we're not going to be sinning anymore. Right? Verse 18. But now are they returned to their power and are come up from the places where they were scattered and have possessed Jerusalem where their sanctuary is and are seated in the hill country for it was desolate. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, there be any error against this people. And they sin against their power. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. And let us go up and we shall overcome them. See, so these heathens know. These heathens know that when we go off, or is the perfect opportunity to go and attack us. And you read that in the book of 2 Maccabees. It's 2 Maccabees 8 and verse 36. It says, Thus he took, up, took upon him to make good to the Romans their tribute by means of captives in, in Jerusalem, told abroad, that the Jews had the most side to fight for them, and therefore they could not be hurt because they followed the laws that he gave them. You see that? So these heathens know that when we're on the right side of the Heavenly Father, nobody can touch us, man. Because it's the most high that's fight for us. The most high is going the most high is gonna fight for us. Why? Because we're doing the things that please him. But when we don't do the things that that don't but, Slocky, but when we do the things that please the Heavenly Father, guess what? The Most High is going to destroy us. Why? Because we're not doing the things that please Him. See that? So we have to do the things that please the Heavenly Father, and He, he and He will take care of us. And that's going to be in the Kingdom of Heaven. When the Kingdom of Heaven gets established, we will always be perpetually doing the things that pleases Him. Which bring me to do what uh, bring me to Ezekiel thirty six, and verse twenty three, it says, and I will sanctify my great name, which was prof which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh, said the Lord Power, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries, and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from your idols will I cleanse you. you see, that's what the Heavenly Father is going to clean us, man. Right? We're going to be cleansed from, cleansed from all our idols, all of our sins that we have committed against them. Right? Verse 26, here's the point. And a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Right. A soft heart. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. You see that? So we're not going to be going off anymore. Why? Because the because the Heavenly Father is literally going to program us to keep his law, statutes and commandments. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people and I'll be your power. All right. Verse 29. I will also save you from all your uncleannesses and I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you, which I just said that earlier, man. Our, our field is going to yield increase, right? And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and increase of the field that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. So we're going to be good. We're going to be prospering, man. So that's why the Heavenly Father is going to instill those Laws, statutes, and commandments in us so we can never go back into captivity again. And that's why our kingdom is going to be perpetual because of that new spirit and that new heart that the Heavenly Father is going to put within us, right? This is Deuteronomy 30 and 6 in the, in the um, NOT. It says, the Lord, your power will, will change your heart, right? Why do our heart need to be changed, right? Which when you read in the King James Version, it's talking about circumcising our heart, right? Changing our hearts. Because our hearts right now is hardened against the Heavenly Father. Especially two-thirds of our people. Right? It says, in the hearts of all your descendants. So that you will love him all your heart. And so 
and so you may live. Right. What does it mean so that we may live so we can remain in our kingdom so we don't have to be in captivity? Because what makes us in that dead state? Being in captivity, being slaves, that's what causes us to be dead. Right. Not knowing who we are, not being in our own land, being slaves. That causes us to be dead, right? So I wanted to read Judith, the fifth chapter, verse 17, in a, a GNT. It says, um, their God hate wickedness, and as long as they did not sin against him, they prospered. But when they disobeyed him, they suffered heavy losses and many wars and were finally taken away as captives to a foreign country. The temple of their God was uh, leveled, and their cities were occupied by their enemies. But now that they have returned to their God, they have come back home from the countries where they have been scared. See, it's a process, man. The Heavenly Father does it over and over and over again. We go through it over and over and over again. So now that we have returned to the Heavenly Father, we're going to go back into the land. As the scriptures say, you got to uh, really believe that. Since they have gained, they have again taken possession of the city of Jerusalem, which we're going to do again, where the temple is. And have resettled in the mountains that had remained uninhabited. Sir, if these people are now sinning against their God, even unknowingly, and if we can be sure that they are guilty of some offense, we can successfully attack them. But if they had not disobeyed the law of their God, then you should leave them alone, or he would defend them, and we will be disgraced before the whole world. See that? So these heathens know, man, when we disobey the Heavenly Father, they got the opportunity to attack us. But when we're on track with them, when we're on the right side, man, they can't touch us. Right? And I'm going to continue going to Daniel 7. All right, see that? It says, and his kingdom shall not be destroyed. Which is kingdom? Who, who, who's the he? Y'all was shy. Right? You're going to have that profitable, that profitable ruler. Daniel 7. And verse, Let's see, Let's see. All right, I'm gonna read verse twenty-five on down. It says Daniel seven twenty-five, and he saw speak great words against the Most High, dealing with America, right, and. He, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and the times and the dividing of times, the three hundred fifty year period. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion, to consume and to destroy until the end. And what the American kingdom, man, America, and the kingdom and dominion of the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given unto the people of the saints of the Most High. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cognitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. Now, why did I read the last verse? Because you don't see no other kingdom after that. It, it ends with us. It ends with us. See that? No other people is going to come up into power after that. It's Daniel 2 and 44. And in, and in the days of these kings, so the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And they shall stand forever. See, our kingdom is going to stand forever, man. Even forever and ever. Pursuant to the Bible. Right? So, Lord willing, you few brothers, a few sisters, ratify. Till next time I say, Shalom.